By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to dive back into the world of Alpha 40 League play. And I'm really excited. I think the previous two matches that I showed to you last week and the week before, they were just very exciting. And today we've got two really cool decks going face to face. So if you're unfamiliar with the Alpha 40, just a really quick recap. It's basically you play with only Alpha cards. You play with 40 cards in your deck, no less and no more. And um, the cool thing is that you can play with as many commons as you want. You can play with six uncommons and with three rares. And um, the thing with the Alpha 40 League is that they've also made specific lists to kind of make sure that it stays fun. So with certain cards, you can only uh, play a one of. For example, you can only play with one Ancestral Recall. You can only play um, with uh, one Time Walk, for example. Now, if you know want to know all the ins and outs of this format, there's actually a really cool rules booklet made by the Northern Paladins. I'll place a link in the description below so you can check out the description below and there you will find a link to that booklet and there you can find all the information. And it's actually pretty cool format to play. And also if you don't have the alpha cards, you can consider playing it, for example, with revised cards. I know revised 40 is also a thing. So it's um it's quite interesting, but here we're going to look at a completely alpha match. And we're going to look at Martin, who is playing with a super cool Enchantress deck. I mean, I can't wait to show this to you. It's such a fascinating, cool deck. And he's playing against Edo and Edo is playing a more traditional deck Really cool as well, especially if you look at the sign cards in this deck, pretty epic. And he's playing with green and with red and really he's playing with the cards um, that you would expect from this color combination. So super aggro, berserks, giant groves, you know, juggernaut, iron claw, orcs, orcish aura flames. He's got all that stuff going. But before I uh, jump into the deck deck section, I would just like to point out that as always, if you want to skip that section or if you want to see specific parts of this video, I always add timestamps in the description below. So again, go to the description below. There you will find several timestamps where you can kind of skip ahead in the video or go back into the video. And you can check out, for example, the deck tech of Martin or the deck tech of Edo. So you can choose when you see what. You can also go straight to the action, go straight to the alpha game. And you can do that by clicking on MTG game. So that will take you straight to the action. Okay, and um, I guess that's all that I wanted to say here in the intro. So that means that we're ready to look at these beautiful decks. And we're going to start with the deck of Martin. Let's take a look at his Enchantress Brew. And here we see the deck of Martin. And I mean, maybe you noticed it already, but this is clearly more than 40 cards. So maybe you remember my introduction where I said Alpha 40, really simple. You have 40 cards. I guess you don't. I guess you can play with more cards. <laughs> my bad. Sorry, guys. Uh, we clearly see more cards in this deck. He must be playing maybe even more than 40, uh, 60 cards in this deck. And it kind of make, makes sense, right? Because he's playing with a card draw deck because it's built around for Jurn Enchantress. This beautiful card, two green and one for an O2 creature that reads whenever you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card. So if you would just play with 40 cards alone, you would really end up basically decking yourself in this format. So I guess it's a good thing uh, Martin, that you're playing with more than 40 cards. And I mean, look at this deck. It is a beauty to behold. We're seeing, of course, we're seeing a lot of enchantments. We're seeing Circle of Protection Red, which is pretty cool. Also with the um, the Orcish uh, Artilleries in this deck. Remember, Orcish Artillery from Alpha has less casting costs. It's only one red and one for a 1-3 that you can tap to deal two damage to any target and is going to deal three damage to its controller, so in this case to Martin. But of course, Martin is hoping to have a circle of protection red on the battlefield so he can prevent that damage from the uh, Orcish artillery. It's a pretty old school combo and uh, it's really cool to see. Another really cool card here I, f I feel is Castle. You don't see Castle often. One white and three to cast gives all your creatures, untapped creatures, plus O plus two. So that means that the uh, Fajuran Enchantress becomes an O4 when there's a Castle on the battlefield which is relevant because that means you can no longer bolt the Fajuran Enchantress. So that's actually pretty good protection. And it also works really well with that single Earthquake, of course. You know, all your creatures have extra defense. So the Earthquake, the creatures are, that don't have the defense from the castle are extra vulnerable 
to that earthquake. We also see Wild Grove to create some ramp. Wild Grove, of course, a really nice card, beautiful art by Mark Poole, Enchant Land. You put it on a land, you tap that land for an extra green uh, mana, so you get and the mana you normally get from the land, and you get a green mana as well. It's, it's a nice budget way as well to make um, to make a dual land, by the way, you know? So I, I remember doing that when I didn't have any dual lands, but I had my, uh, my Wild Grove. I was like, yeah, I got a Wild Grove. I'm just gonna make my own Taiga, putting my Wild Grove on my mountain. I would love to do that. You know, I enjoy, really enjoy doing that. And we see a nice little synergy here between uh, Wild Grove and Lay Druid. Lay Druid is actually a rare, I believe. Um, uh, or is it an uncommon? Is it a rare or uncommon? Let me know in, in the comments below. Part of me says it's a rare, but maybe I'm exaggerating. Anyway, it's a really cool card. It's a 1-1. One -one. It's a Druid. And you can tap it to untap a land. And I just I just love the simplicity of this card. So you can tap the druid to untap a land. So if you've got a land uh, with that wild grove attached, you can tap your wild grove land for two mana, right? Because you get that extra green from wild grove. Then you can untap it with your lay druid and you can tap it again. That way you can get four mana out of a single land. How cool is that, right? That is really cool. Talking about, you know, generating mana, I think it's something that Martin wants to do because because I mean look at his uh, creatures there in the right corner he's got force of nature Shivan dragon and two beautiful Sarah angels and he also plays with that artifact the hive the hive not that well known you don't see it that often it's five to cast and then five and tap and you know what you get for five and tap a one one flying wasp token <laughs> so just it's hilarious but actually I think it's good. I mean, once Martin has control of the match, and that's kind of what he wants with his Wall of Swords, you know, and, and, and you know, kind of with the card draw engine that he's got, uh, he probably just wants to create some Wasp tokens, maybe to use as a chump blocker for the uh, for the forces that are coming in from Edo's side, you know, his opponent. So, for example, chumping a Juggernaut, um, you know, and at the same time, he can make a little army as well, maybe kind of, you know, swing in and deal little bits of damage. I mean, this deck is really more on the control side, right? I mean, that's that's safe to say. And now we're gonna look at the deck of his opponent because what his opponent wants to do, and that is why I think this is such a nice uh, uh, matchup, his opponent, he wants to knock at the door and he wants to pay, uh, play super aggro. So let's take a look at the deck of Edo. And here we see the deck of the opponent of Martin today. So it's red and it's green and it's piloted by Edo. And I've called this deck the Berserkers and I've called it, of course, after those three beautiful Alpha Berserks in this deck. Maybe it's good to kind of zoom in on that first. It's an instant for one green. And uh, I'm just gonna read to you the current Oracle text because um, it, it can get kind of confusing. So this card reads, cast this spell only before the combat damage step. So you can cast in, in combat, but before the damage step uh, starts. Then it reads, target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is its power at the beginning of the next end step, destroy that creature if it attacked this turn. So uh, if it didn't attack, you don't have to destroy it. So that's kind of an interesting part of this card that's usually not, um, not seen, but that could kind of create weird situations. But the most important thing in this deck is it doubles the power of a creature and it gives a trample. And then if we look at the rest of the deck, I mean, we're just seeing a lot of cards here that want to do business, right? We've got a Juggernaut. So if you Berserk a Juggernaut, it's got 10 Trample Power. That is huge. We also see Giant Groves in this deck, of course. They're great with the Berserk. But what may be um, as good as those Giant Groves are actually the Orcish Oriflame. And the Orcish Oriflame is a pretty cool card, especially when you've got the Alpha Edition. Because in Alpha, it's way less mana to cast. Just like we saw the Orcish Artillery of Martin, the Orcish Oriflame has a little trick as well. It's only one red and one to cast in Alpha. Usually this enchantment is gonna set you back four mana. You gotta tap four lands to cast this baby, but not in Alpha. It's only one red and one. It's an enchantment that reads, when attacking, all of your attacking creatures gain plus one, plus O. Oh. And again, this works really nicely with, you know, that aggressive attitude of Edo, but also with Berserks, because that plus one extra power is gonna be times by two, and it's gonna be turned into trample power when you put a Berserk on it. So it's just really, a powerful deck and it's kind of a straightforward deck, right? I mean, he just wants to slam, attack and kick ass. And then he's got a little bit of modest card draw with that Jam Day Tome. And like I said in the intro, what I really like about this is all the beautiful sign cards. We see all his red cards and artifact cards are signed. So that is really nice 
to see. And I see that first mountain is signed. So I wonder if all the mountains are going to be signed, Edo. We're going to keep an eye on that. I know that Edo is a big fan of signed cards. So I'm expecting to see a lot of signed lands from you as well. Okay, this is the deck of Edo. So Edo wants to slam face. And Martin wants to hold back the fort. So I'm really curious to see who's going to win this. I know that if the game's going to take long, Martin's got this, I think. But if the games, got, games are going to be short, Edo's got this. So um, anyway, that's what I think. Let's now go to the games and see who's going to win this one, Martin or Edo. Game number one, here we go. And we've got Martin with the Enchanter's deck sitting on the left. Beautiful altered planes there by Jesper Meerforce. And on the right, we have Edo on the Timmy playmat. But he's not playing any Timmies. And there is a mountain. Nice to see that double Schuler signature on the playmat and on the land as well. Let's see what Martin can do there. Tapping to Orcish Artillery. This is actually a really good card here for Martin. Remember, uh, most of the creatures in the deck of Edo just have a toughness of two or less. So this could be a huge problem. There is an Iron Claw Orc. So for example, he can kill that Iron Claw Orc. He can do that. I guess when you're Edo, you're thinking, okay, at least then he takes uh, three damage himself. He's gonna drop to 17. So we're gonna see if that is gonna happen. I do see, I, th I thought it was a Hive in his deck. I'm not sure. He's playing a force now, so he's got all the three colors of land. He's actually going to attack here. Oh, no, he's going to kill it. Okay, <laughs> for a moment there, I thought he's going to attack. Of course not. Stupid me. He's going to kill the Iron Claw Orc. He is going to take three damage. So you see him there drop to 17. There we see a mountain. And he's looking at his hand again. He's not playing out anything, I think, because of that uh, Iron or Orcish Artillery on the side of Martin. And Martin, you're playing a Wall of Swords, and he's going to attack for one, I assume. Exactly. Now he is going to attack. Edo dropping to 19. So things are already looking bad for Edo. He needs to find something against the Orcish Artillery. Can he maybe play an often Troll? Because at least an often Troll he can regenerate. And there he's going to cast another Plains. Another altered one. He's going to attack again. Edo's going to drop to 18. And I don't think he's... Oh, he is playing something. There's a Sarah Angel. Wow. I think this, this first game is going to be over really quick. Let's see if Edo can do anything here. Okay. Okay. At least that's something. So he's casting a Juggernaut. And the Juggernaut is going to be a little problem, I think, for Martin. Cannot kill it with the Orcish Artillery. Cannot block it with the Wall of Swords. Then the question is, does he really want to sacrifice his Sarah Angel for a Juggernaut? I don't think so. Let's see what he can do. Does he have a Disenchant? He's got a Disenchant. Okay, this is a very one-sided first game. I think that Orcish Artillery has had such a big impact. There is a double attack, so hitting him for five. Okay, there's a Berserk to kind of get rid of the Sarah. That does mean that Edo's got to take eight from the Sarah Angel. So you see this more often in green when you're only playing green or you just don't have a lot of removal that you start using Berserk as a way to remove creatures. It's not ideal, of course, because you do take damage and you do take double damage. And we uh, see that happen here for Edo. Edo has to pass turn here. This is a really painful game for him. There's not much that he can do. Again, a Berserk as well on this one. So he's taking two damage, going to seven, but now at least the Orcish Artillery is gone. There is the Hive. And of course, with that Hive, you can start making a little 1-1 one -one Flyers. And don't underestimate flying in this format. It's really good evasion. So Edo needs to play something. He's not playing anything. Bad news for Edo. At least he's not under a lot of pressure. That's something. Pass turn here. Let's see. Martin probably just going to dump some land and then start making Wasp Tokens. Going through his hand, seems to be a little bit in the tank. Maybe he's got to make a choice between playing a creature or creating a wasp token. I do see a disenchant. I think I see a Frigurn Enchantress. He doesn't have enough mana to play any Enchantress and create a token, so I think this is a good decision. And we see another Berserk in the hand of Edo. End of turn, we see a wasp token, 1-1 one, one Flyer, so he makes that with the artifact, the Hive. 
And attacking him now for one. So he's going to drop to six. And we really don't see a lot of Edo's deck in this game number one. There we see a Fajuran Enchantress. It would be nice for Martin now if he, for example, has a castle in hand. To draw into an extra card and kind of give some extra buff to his Enchantress. There we see another Forest. Three cards in hand. He's going to go for the Graveyard. Perhaps he's got a Regrowth. Passing turn here. End step. We see another Wasp token being made by Martin. I don't really see Edo getting back from this. I think he's just going to take two more. Yeah, he's going to drop to four. Does he have an enchantment? Ooh, another Sarah. Another Sarah Angel. I mean, this is it, right? Okay, we see an Optum Troll. Oi, oi, oi. Two, two, regenerate. Always good to see an Uft control, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. Here we see Bam Bam and thank you, ma'am. He's definitely going to die. Ho, <laughs> ho, look at that. Yeah, so Edo is just not finding the right cards in the right order. And I think that Orcish Artillery is a huge problem for Edo here. So we see a first game one win for, um, for Martin. But hey, man, we've got game two. Let's hope that game two is a little bit more exciting. So let's uh, let these players shuffle and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Edo on the play. Let's see what he can do. Starting with the forest pass turn here. Martin and there's a lot of elves turn one. So he is ramping up. And okay, some pressure here from Edo. Iron Claw Orcs. So he can start attacking next turn. And it looks like the life total, by the way, of Martin is still on 17, but he's on 20. Just to clarify, that's still the life total from game number one. So at least we've got some pressure here from, uh, from Edo. Let's see, what can Martin do? I'm hoping he's not gonna cast another Orcish Artillery. Those, those cards are just too good for one, and, for one and one red, come on. Let's see. Of course, Edo wants to play the quick game. His deck is very explosive with all the giant groves and berserks. And okay, there is a Chaos Orb, Alpha Chaos Orb. That's pretty cool. Are we going to see a flip? That would be sweet. There we see another mountain. I'm kind of trying to look into their hands, but it's hard. There we see an Orcish Oriflame. So his attacking creatures get plus one plus O oh right now, and he's going to flip. Okay, let's put this in, in slow mo. Let's enjoy this flip. Getting ready for the flip, making sure he's got the right altitude. So I've put it here in slow-mo. There we go. Boom! Ah, oh, that's a hit. Poor Iron Claw Orc. He was doing his job, attacking for three power. He was feeling all muscular and, 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 and stuff. And now this happens. And so on flavor as well, Edo. Orcish or flame and then attacking with your Iron Claw Orc. And there we see a castle. Let's see if Edo can put some more pressure on the board. A Juggernaut right now would be brilliant. Or another Orc, also fine. Okay, or a Grizzly Bear. And another Orc Flame, love it. Hopefully this Grizzly Bear can stick because it can attack for four next turn. And uh, now we see the Lanor Elf is now a 1-3 because of that castle. So plus O plus two bonus from this enchantment. Really nice to see it in action. You don't see that often. We see a disenchant there in hand as well for Martin. What else do we see? I think a lot of mana, a lot of lands. And uh, the cool thing about Alpha 40, by the way, or cool but interesting thing here is, okay, double enchantment, taking care of both the art flames. Wow. That kind of is bad, but also for Edo, it's not that bad. It shows that Martin doesn't have any other options, which is good, I guess, for Edo. Uh, you can now swing in. What I wanted to say is with Alpha 40, you can only... Um, take a mulligan if you have only lands in hand or no lands in hand. So if you have a one lander or just, you know, I don't know, five or six lands, you cannot take a mulligan. And he didn't attack her with the grizzly bear, of course, because of that castle that Lanora Elf was at 1-3. But now we see a juggernaut on the side of Edo and they pass journey. And remember, Martin just played out all those disenchants. So maybe he just doesn't have the disenchant. There we see a double attack. Remember, Edo's deck is full of giant crows, berserks, Maybe he can deal so much damage here that he can already finish the game. There we see a block. What is he going to do? I wonder if he's got a Berserk or a Giant Grove. I, I do think I see a Berserk there. He's actually not doing anything. 
So he's blocking, taking five. He's gonna drop to 12. I don't think he took any damage. He should actually drop to 15. Exactly, now he's changing it. The 17 was still from the game one. So he's gonna drop to 15. And uh, there is a giant growth. And that means he's gonna go to 12. Is he gonna cast his Berserk? Is he gonna do it? No, he's not gonna do it. Oh, I wonder, does he have another giant growth in hand there? That is so interesting. I would be so tempted to also play that Berserk, but you don't want to do it too quickly. He's untapping. Martin going through his cards. He's gonna attack. He's gonna block the Grizzly. Are we gonna see Giant Grove Berserk? Giant Grove. And a Berserk. Oh, I think that's enough. I think he's got it. He's gonna go to seven. He's gonna deal 10. He's gonna, wait a minute, it's three. It's, it's enough? Yeah. He's gonna win this one. Boom! Edo does it. That is some good math, man. Because what happens is the Grizzly Bear becomes a 5-5. Because of the Berserk, it becomes a 10-5 Trample. The Lunderware Elf is a 1-3, so he loses 7 damage with that. That means he's gonna go um, he's gonna go down to 5. And then, of course, you have that Juggernaut that's gonna deal those remaining 5 points of damage. And this is just how lethal the deck of Edo can be. I mean, you know, Martin was, was drawing absolute nothing, you know, except for the Chaos Orb. Uh, but he just couldn't, you know, find the time to, to, you know, to kind of survive long enough. So really nice. I'm actually happy that it's a 1-1. One -one. So both players shuffling up uh, again and getting ready for that crucial game number three. Game number three, one one between these two players. And I guess the big question here is, are we going to see the Fajurian Enchantress in action? We haven't seen her in game one and two. There's the start from Martin and there's Edo with a basic forest. Here we go. What is he going to do? Playing out of forest? No, taking it back. Changed his mind. What can he do? I see a lot of elves in hand. Uh, is that a Black Lotus there? He's playing a Plains. Okay, there's the Black Lotus. Second the Lotus. Whoa, Sarah Angel, turn number two, and this is really bad for Edo because he's playing red and green. I mean, he doesn't have a swords or anything in those colors. What is he going to do? Is he going to try to berserk it next turn? That does mean that he'll take eight damage. I'm not sure if he's got a berserk in hand. I assume he does, playing with three berserks. Not even playing a creature here. There's the attack. There we see the berserk. So that means eight damage here for Edo. So he's on 12, but at least the Sarah Angel is gone. I think this is a good decision. There is a Lanawer Elves and a pass turn. And now Edo needs to at least play out a creature, maybe an often troll. Let's see what we're gonna get. And there's a Grizzly Bear and a Scrip Sprites. So a 2-2 and a 1-1 Flyer. So at least that's some pressure on the board. Finding a mountain, tapping five. Ooh, there's another Sarah Angel. He's playing two Sarahs and he's finding both of them. That is quite unlucky for Edo here. Again, he has to try to find a solution. Remember, he is playing with a lot of Giant Groves. Are we gonna see an Aura Flame here? No, we're gonna see an Iron Claw Orcs. Two, two creature, attacking with both. Pretty aggressive here. I'm a little bit surprised. Taking the damage, gonna drop to 17. And I was kind of expecting Edo here to keep the Scrip Sprites at bay to possibly block on the Sarah and then play a Giant Grove on it. But he decides to go for the Absolute Aggression. And there we see Martin reading the Iron Claw Orcs. So Iron Claw Orcs can only block creatures with power one or less. So as soon as there's a 2-2 attacking, the Iron Claw Orcs are nowhere in sight in the blocking department. There's an attack for four here. Edo already dropping to eight. This is getting really dangerous. Tapping two, tapping three. Okay, there we see a Fajuran Enchantress. But he's not casting an enchantment, just passing turn here. I wonder what Edo's gonna do now. I don't believe he plays with any X spells in this deck, so if he, uh, or else he could have played, for example, a Fireball or something else. Attacking with everything again, just going for full pressure. I wonder what's in his hand. I believe he's got three cards or four cards. Remember, he plays with a ton of Berserks and Giant Groves. We see a block here of the Fajurn Enchantress on the Grizzly Bear. That is an interesting decision. So the Fajurn is going to die. 
And he's going to take two, three damage in total, going to drop to 14. And there we see a script sprites and an off control. Oi, 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 two, two regenerate, has one red open, two regenerate. So I think Edo is perhaps going to jump block here, or he's just going to take four, going to drop to four. Remember, Edo is all about the offense. Martin's on 14. That may seem like a lot, but if Edo can find a Giant Grove and a Berserk, he can deal some serious damage. I wonder what that last card in Edo's hand is. And we see Martin are really thinking, really in the tank. I think just attacking with the Sarah, that's kind of the easy decision to make here. Two cards in Martin's hand. What is he going to do? It's hard to see what those two cards are. Remember, this is 1-1. One, one. The person that wins this game wins this match. Pressure here. And I think if you're Martin, you kind of feel like you should be able to win this. On the other hand, Edo is really swarming the board here. Look at the amount of creatures on his side of the board. Two script sprites, huge grizzly bear, iron claw orc, and an oi 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 often troll. And Martin really in the tank, tapping his cards, looking at the same two cards again, trying to find the right play. Of course, right now, Edo's, like, he doesn't have any green open, so I think that attack with the Sarah is kind of safe. Looks like he's going to tap something. Are we going to see a castle here, perhaps? No, he's not tapping. Yeah, he is tapping one planes. That would actually be pretty good, because a castle also works really nicely against trample damage. Because you're beefing your creatures with plus two in the, in the toughness department. Is he gonna do it? Is he not gonna do it? Playing a hurricane! Okay, now I get it. He is playing a hurricane. This is quite interesting. So he's playing a hurricane for three because he doesn't want to kill his Sarah Angel. That means three damage to both players. Or, because he's playing it for three, right? So I believe he should go, yeah, he should go to five. Now he's going to attack, so he's going to go to one. Ooh, Edo almost dead. Almost dead. He needs something good here. I believe it was some kind of red creature. Couldn't really see what it was. Okay, it was an orcish or flame. That's actually not too bad. Depends what he has in hand. And he's going to attack with everything he's got. And that's what he has to do with his deck. Going in here for six. Remember the Aura Flame. So that means they're now three in power. So that's nine damage on the board here. Attacking with a nine. And yeah, he has to block here. It's kind of unfortunate for Edo that he doesn't have an extra Aura Flame. Because then uh, his creatures would get a plus two. And he would be kind of forced to lose the Sarah Angel here. We see the Lanawer Elves blocking the Grizzly Bear. And what else are we going to see? It's not really... Okay, so he's taking six damage. Then there's a bear. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was really hoping to, you know, perhaps see a giant growth at least. But no, I think that Hurricane was really a decisive play by Martin. But what an exciting game number three. And I have to say... After game one, I was a little bit concerned because that Orcish Aura Flame dominated that game number one. Uh, sorry, Orcish Artillery, I should say, dominated game number one. But after that, we really got a match. So thank you, Martin, and, uh, and thank you, Edo, for bringing these beautiful decks to the table and showing it right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you enjoyed this game and you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and ring that bell. And also leave a like, leave a comment, all that helps the channel grow. And there's one other thing you can do, you can also become a patron of the channel. So if you like this content, if you like the Alpha 40, if you like all the other old school stuff, consider becoming a patron and sponsoring the channel. How can you do that? Quite simple, there's a card popping up right now. Click on that info card and that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can check out all the ins and outs. Talking about that, one of the great perks of becoming a patron is that your name will be in the end scroll. And right now we are going to that very same end scroll. Let's take a look at the amazing, the wonderful patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go.